At 10 years old, Marjan Satrapi had a lot on her plate. It was 1980, and the last Shah, or king, of Iran had just been replaced by the Islamic regime. Marjan also had to stop speaking French in school, wear a veil, come to terms with her family's dramatic history, and accept the unfairness of Iran's class system. That's a lot to deal with. Let's rewind a little. As a very young child, Marjan already sensed that the world needed fixing. She even wanted to become a prophet at one point. God seemed to embrace the idea. When her parents and countrymen started protesting against the Shah in the late 1970s, the spirit of revolution filled Marjan's brave little heart. She devoured picture books and comics about major revolutions and the big ideas that sparked them. Marjan loved the fact that Karl Marx, the father of communism, looked like God, only with curlier hair. It was confusing, though, when Marjan's schoolbook said that the Shah had been chosen by God. So Marjan's father set the record straight. The Shah was not chosen by God. He was the son of a soldier named Reza. But that's not all. The emperor that Reza toppled back in the 1920s was Marjan's great-grandfather. Royal ancestry. Cool. But Reza's actions created terrible hardship for Marjan's family. For one, her grandfather, the prince, was imprisoned for his communist beliefs. Her grandma said it was all true. She remembered visiting him in prison. But this was a painful memory. Because of this, Marjan's family was glad that the Shah was being overthrown. Now that Marjan's position on the Shah was sorted, she faced another problem, Iran's class system. Their maid, Mary, was like a sister to Marjan. So it was hard for Marjan to accept that Mary wasn't treated as an equal. Although Marjan and Mary were punished equally when they snuck out to attend a demonstration against the Shah. They didn't realise they'd attended the deadly Black Friday protest. They could have been killed. But Marjan's passion for justice was only in its early stages. When the Shah finally stepped down, Marjan wanted revenge against his supporters. This extended to their children. It's a good thing Marjan's mother stopped her before someone got hurt. Marjan would need to learn the art of forgiveness. But forgiveness is complicated, even for Marjan's mother. One day, some old family friends came to visit. Until recently, they had been political prisoners under the Shah because of their communist beliefs. When they described the torture and brutal killings in the prison, Marjan's mother cried out for revenge. Hang on, didn't she just tell Marjan that revenge was off the menu? Sensing her confusion, Marjan's mother explained that some people don't deserve forgiveness. They will eventually get what they deserve. This was all very overwhelming, so Marjan found comfort with God. Then came the day when Marjan discovered a real hero in the family, her uncle Anush. Like their family friends, Anush was also recently released from prison. He'd been arrested for his ill-fated attempt to help set up a republic in Azerbaijan. Like most political prisoners, he was also a communist. He impressed Marjan to the moon and back. She absolutely loved her uncle Anush. Sadly, after surviving imprisonment under the Shah, Uncle Anush was arrested by the Islamic regime's Revolutionary Guard. Marjan was the one family member he asked to see before they executed him. After this tearful and traumatic goodbye, Marjan was furious with God. Along with the regime's crackdown on dangerous thinkers, big cultural changes were enforced. One of the most visible changes was the way people dressed. 
it was declared that all women must wear the veil in public, and men were banned from wearing short sleeves and ties. When the satrapies went out to rally against the strict new rules, the Revolutionary Guards attacked the protesters. Welcome to the new normal. Before Iran's borders closed, the satrapies took a wonderful family holiday to Spain and Italy. It was one of the best times they ever had as a family. But they returned to a rude shock. Iran was now at war with Iraq. When Iraqi jets attacked Iran's capital, Tehran, Marjan expected Iran to showcase its strength. But Iran's fighter pilots were now political prisoners after a failed military takeover. Iran was vulnerable. Luckily, the fighter pilots struck a deal with the regime's leaders. Release us, play the national anthem on TV, and we'll fight the Iraqis. Since Iran's national anthem had been banned and replaced with an Islamic hymn, the satrapies were shocked to hear it on TV. Their national pride swelled even more when they heard that 140 Iranian jets had bombed Baghdad, Iraq's capital. Take that, Saddam! But Iran's losses were heavy. The fact that the dead soldiers were hailed as heroes did not relieve the suffering of their grieving families. Marjan realised that it was better to have a living father than a dead hero. As the war with Iraq intensified, people fled southern Iran and descended on Tehran. Resources were squeezed and people squabbled in supermarkets. Marjan even overheard some ladies complaining that the southern refugee women might steal their husbands. Marjan's school insisted on carrying out religious morning rituals in assembly. This included breast-beating funeral marches, which Marjan thought were hilarious. When the headmistress called the parents in to discuss modesty and discipline, Marjan's father told her to shave her moustache. Like father, like daughter. What wasn't so funny was that teenage boys from poorer neighbourhoods were being brainwashed into joining the army. They were told they would enter paradise with all its riches and women if they died in battle. The boys joined the army in droves, only to die wearing fake keys to paradise around their necks. It was a different story for the boys from Marjan's nice, middle-class neighbourhood. They were enjoying their youth and having punk-themed parties. This was the start of Marjan's love affair with punk rock. Meanwhile, the war with Iraq raged on. When the Iraqi jets bombed Tehran, the basement of the Satrapi's apartment building became a bomb shelter. It was a time of terror and anxiety, made worse by the bully tactics of Iran's Revolutionary Guard. One night, the satrapies had to pour all their wine down the toilet because Revolutionary Guards had followed them home. It turned out they only wanted a bribe, but that was a very close call. The regime was becoming tyrannical, rounding up and executing people who opposed it. The war with Iraq had also cost a million lives, and Iran's regime seemed to be deliberately prolonging it. The stress of it all was getting to Marjan. She was heading for puberty and embracing her rebellious side. She cut class to hang out with older girls, started arguing with her mum, spent more time alone, and took up smoking. Goodbye, baby Margie. Hello, Marjan, the punk rebel. By 1982, Iran's war against its own people had become a bigger issue than its war with Iraq. Border closures separated families and broke many hearts. When Marjan's uncle Taher suffered a serious heart attack, he was barred from travelling to England for treatment. He died without having his last wish to see his eldest son, who'd been sent to Holland for his safety. When the borders finally reopened, 
Marjan's parents went on a holiday to Turkey. Since Iran had banned imports from the West, Turkey was the closest country that sold rock and roll merchandise. So Marjan gave her folks a rad wish list, including chocolate, posters, and denim. Hey, it was the 80s. As soon as Marjan's parents handed over their holiday loot, she put on all her brand new gear and went out to buy music tapes. Western music was forbidden, but Marjan knew where to buy tapes from street peddlers. She made her purchase, but her appearance caught the attention of some female revolutionary guards. Marjan's punk style almost got her arrested, but her ace acting skills got her off the hook. Kim Wilde, Marjan's pop idol, would have been proud. But tragedy lurked around the corner. When Iraq started aiming its Scud missiles at Tehran, the danger became very real. These missiles could level whole buildings, so the satrapy's basement was now useless as a shelter. Many fled Tehran, but the satrapies stayed. They wanted Marjan to keep up her quality education at the French school. Their Jewish neighbours, the Baba Levis, also stayed. Marjan was friends with their lovely daughter, Neda. One day, Marjan was out shopping when the bomb alarms went off. The radio confirmed that her neighbourhood had been targeted by an Iraqi Scud missile. By the time Marjan arrived home in a taxi, it was clear that her street was the one hit. Thankfully, her home had been spared, but the Baba Levis had been destroyed. Among the wreckage, Marjan glimpsed Nadar's favourite bracelet attached to something unrecognisable. After Nadar's death, Marjan became even more rebellious. At 14, Marjan was expelled for striking her principal when she tried to confiscate Marjan's jewellery. When she was finally accepted into a new school, Marjan soon drew negative attention for criticising Iran's Islamic regime. Her parents were worried. They didn't want Marjan to end up like her uncle Anoush. Judging by her outspoken ways, it seemed only a matter of time before the Revolutionary Guard picked her up. Her fate would be unthinkable. So, Marjan's parents made a heartbreaking decision. Marjan was being sent to Vienna, Austria. There, she would attend a French school and live with her mum's best friend. This was a big, scary change for Marjan but she knew her parents were right. After tearful goodbyes to her friends and a long cuddle with her grandma, Marjan was all set for her new journey. But Marjan's hardest goodbye was at the airport with her parents. They tried to be cheerful when they saw her off. Her father talked about Viennese chocolate cake and her mother said they would visit her in six months' time. But as Marjan crossed the departure's threshold, her mother collapsed. Marjan is as tough as 14-year-olds come, and for now, she's safe from Iran's regime. But will she be safe on her own, so far from home? Stick around for Volume 2 to find out. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.